Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, I've got a red dragon for you. A red dragon, you say, but you hardly ever take a look at red dragons, Mark. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, um, Red Dragon sent this over to me for review, and I'm actually, I've been sitting there looking at it for a few days, waiting to get to it, and I finally had my chance. This is the Olaf Red Dragon Hot Swappable Full Metal Jacket Keyboard. Um, I mean, Full Metal Mechanical Keyboard. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day that Red Dragon is putting out aluminum keyboards. And this is the second one that I've I've gotten a chance to take a look at. I believe from everything that I see out there that they were released at about the same time. So one is not first other than the other one. They just released a 65%, um, which they call 60%, the K641. And now they've released this one, the Olaf, which they seem to have a model. Oh, okay, this is the K648. So the other one I took a look at was the K649. So that seems to be the series for these. Really, really reading real quick about the features we have a 94 key layout full sturdy brushed aluminum frame high performance mechanical switches hot swappable keyboard for more switch options detachable c cable stylish rgb backlighting rest rest design for long play time and unique 94 key layout it does have oh it is not an 1800 i just realized it's kind of missing the whole column over here on the right well 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 so it is a little bit different now, it does not say what switches I have on here, so I guess we're going to find out. Let's go ahead and break the seal and see what Olaf has in store for us. So before we start taking a look at the keyboard, I just wanted to see what we have in here. We have a wrist rest that is designed uh, in basically the same fashion as the one before this one, the K649. Uh, basically slides into there and sits. And it looks like it also has uh, one for the back which is a smartphone or a tablet stand. We have the manual, we have the stickers they always include. We also have a spare couple of keycaps in case you wanna change them from orange to a gray. And then we have these nuts or these bolts right here that are used to basically lock the, uh, It's they're used to lock the wrist rest into place so it doesn't slide off either to the right or the left. We also have your USB-C to USB-C cable with the elbows and the connectors on the side and we have a USB-C to USB-A adapter connected with a tail. We also have a box of four spare switches as Red Dragon always does and I really commend them for that. Uh, let's see what switches do we have. Are they red as well? Yep, looks like these are loaded with red as well. See, these are the black top, and they're definitely a lot more pinion than, or the, these are the black bottoms, and they're actually a lot more pinion, or at least to my ear, than the white bottoms. I don't know if there's any difference between the two, um, or if they're just kind of matching them up based on the base color. So, nonetheless, it's always nice that Red Dragon does include an extra set of switches for us, um, in case... You know, something happens to one and we don't have access to spare switches like, you know, somebody you might know. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is uh, pretty standard. Uh, we'll go ahead and set this aside for the moment. Uh, we may need to come back to this, although this is a wired one, so we're not going to have to worry about trying to connect in wireless modes. And here we have Olaf. Now, um, this is... I'm going to say this is quite an interesting layout. I do like the frame, and I like that it has that sunken, kind of does have a sunken frame. If you're familiar with the um, Keychron, um, the K series, uh, maybe some of the C as well, but the K series, a lot of them have that sunken in spot with a raised uh, bevel, and really the only aluminum part of it is the raised bevel, but almost has that feel. But I don't know if you guys can see this, but what's going on right here? So, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of speechless because I mean, 
All right, yeah, we do have an enter key here, but if I'm typing, uh, I yeah, I can't. I'm not going to be able to type on this without looking. Uh, I don't understand why they didn't just go ahead and add that one more column. Um, I it's just one more column. This isn't this isn't an 1800. This is uh, I don't know what it is. I, I, I really like the way this keyboard looks, but functional wise, I have a problem with this. I mean, skip this button, that's fine, but I need the plus, I need the enter here at the very minimum, um, and why they did it this way is honestly beyond me and just so we're taking a look at the same thing if we take a actual 1800 so here we just have bigger keys there's the one used here this is just sunken down a little bit it's over here but then you see we're missing a whole column and that enter and that plus there not being there, that's uh, that's a kick in the, the stomach. It really is. Um, when I first got it, my brain just scanned it and thought full full keypad, thought eighteen hundred, but this is not that. I I this would annoy me more than anything else because I'm gonna be. My, my hand is going to be mad at me for striking my desk since I don't have that entire other column and I don't see what they saved by doing that. I, I just... All right, I'll, I'll just leave that be for right now. Um, otherwise, it's a very substantial keyboard. Obviously, no flex at all. We got one pair of feet. We have an all-around, appears aluminum. It looks like an aluminum integrated plate. Oh no, we have a steel plate. See, ah, so much difference between this and the K649 that I just took a look at. Because um, that one actually all aluminum with an aluminum plate, but this one has a steel plate. So why didn't they stick with the aluminum plate? I don't know. Things that make you go, hmm, let's take a look here. What do we got? We've got black stabilizers. They're slightly better than the milky ones, but let me guess. Yep, they are quite loose. They are lubricated, but, I mean, that's wobbling. They are called stabilizers. Stabilizers are meant to remain nice and stable. That steel plate just does not help with these unlubed threads. Now... We have north facing. We at least do have five and three and five pin hot swap compatibility. We have a nice dense foam down at the bottom, and we have what appears to be an EVA foam between the plate and the PCB. But again, we're dealing with the steel plate. Um, there's no. Uh, I'm not even striking the key. I'm just tapping it. Put it back end towards the microphone. It rings like a bell. I mean, come on, guys. I was really looking forward to this one being a nice option, but steel plate, just deleting a whole column for no reason. It's not like uh, an 1800 is a copyrighted thing. You can use it. You can create an 1800, no problem. Um, I'm just uh, honestly confused. Now, I'm sure this is going to be... Oh! Uh, see, I just stop me in mid-sentence here. Because this... For a second, I thought these holes were holes for screw and stabilizers, but they appear to be there for the ISO variants of this keyboard. So, yeah, I just, I mean, stabilizers should not be this wobbly. You guys can get the tolerances right and actually use 
tolerances. Use stabilizers that match tolerances and they'll fit just perfect. Well, let's see what it looks like once we turn the lights on. The way it started up makes me think it might have a Sonics MCU in there. Right, number lock. And caps lock. RGB is decent. It's not the brightest, but it's definitely not the dimmest I've been seeing lately from Red Dragon. So the logo is in the front here where it's on the side on the other um, aluminum one. I'm, I'm just trying to understand why they went a different route with this one. Because, I mean, so much of the design language is shared across the two. Though that one has side RGB, this one doesn't. But I, I, I could forgive the steel plate if it had a normal numpad cluster, but... I don't get this. I don't understand that. That that doesn't make sense to me. And that basically just means I'm going to hit the numlock off. And I'm just going to use it for insert the lead home page up, page down. It's a 60% to me. I can't use that, that numpad because I just keep hitting when I'm looking for the plus and the enter. And if it... it, it Yes, I could probably train myself and change my muscle memory to work with that, but then every other numpad that I have, I'd have to train back. So it just isn't, doesn't make much sense to me. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Red Dragon K648 Olaf, a 94 key, 90% aluminum keyboard with a steel plate. It does come well dampened with both an EVA foam between the plate and the PCB and what appears to be silicone below the PCB and inside of the case. It does come loaded with double shot PVT shine through OEM keycaps and with a couple of extra novelties as well as unlubed stock Red Dragon Red linear switches. The keyboard weighs in at 1110 grams and MSRPs for $69.99. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 and a half millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 30 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of five degrees. Flipping out the only included pair of feet will raise the back up to 41 and a half millimeters, changing the typing angle to 11 degrees. All right, so today we took a look at Olaf from Red Dragon, the K648, a 90%. I didn't stutter or say, uh, this is a 90% keyboard. Um, it is a non-standard layout, and it's one that personally I, I can't use. Um, then taken into consideration, this keyboard sells for $69.99 MSRPs. Yes, it sells, it will sell for cheaper, but taking all that in consideration and the fact that it says full aluminum on the box when it has a steel plate, I mean, I can almost forgive it if it had an aluminum plate, especially because it says full aluminum, but I am not going to be able to get, get through this column. If I train myself to use this, then I'm going to have to retrain myself to use all the other standard layouts. Why they skipped this column, I don't understand. So it's something I can't use as a daily. So I will come back to, to this and mod it, but it's probably going to be a little while because it's not something I can use. Perhaps I'll mod it and then do a giveaway if anyone else is interested in this. Because, I mean, if nothing else, you can at least still use it as a navigation cluster, you know, in case you want your own insert and delete key and you don't want to be looking for which mapping it has on here if you have loaded up different keycaps. So, um, it's... I mean, out of the few that I've taken at, uh, out of the handful of Red Dragon keyboards I've taken out, uh, taken a look at over the past week or so. Um, 
this one's the one I'm least impressed with. But the rest of them have left me actually quite happy in a lot of ways. This one kind of just, it feels like it was worked on by a different team and they were trying to steal crib notes from another team. They got some of it right and some of it wrong. But I just, I, I don't see this being too popular with too many people. So, but those are just my feelings. What do you guys think? Can you use this or do you feel the same way I do about it just kind of leaving something left to be desired. Also, if you guys have any ideas or anything you'd like for me to do when I come back to this keyboard to mod it and see what I can make. I mean, just lubing the switches is going to make a huge difference, but I think a couple little things like um, some uh, switch pads as well as a Tempest tape mod and maybe even, um, well, I've got a couple of ideas. Anyway, if you guys got any ideas, let me know. And also, I'd like to know what you guys think about this keyboard. Um, at its price of $69.99, though it does come pre-built with switches and keycaps, I can think of many other uh, keyboards, both barebone and pre-built, um, in a very you know, either lower or about the same price range that I think offers more. Um, in terms of what it is as a keyboard. Like I said, this one, not having that. If it had that, I could excuse everything else, and I'd be like, okay, this is a keyboard that I can use, but I can't use a keyboard that's missing that last column. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the stock sound test. Don't be expecting much, because these are unlubed switches on a steel plate, and it is Ping City. But until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.